Okay, ready to tackle this whole resistance thing? We're diving into Stephen Pressfield's Do the Work. It's like the ultimate guide for anyone who's ever felt stuck creatively. And you've brought in some interesting stuff to unpack alongside it. Yeah. It's one thing to know what Pressfield calls this force, you know, resistance. But we're going beyond just giving it a name. Right, because we want to figure out how to actually conquer it. So he calls it a force, even an enemy. Is it really that dramatic? Well, think about it. What does this resistance keep us from doing? That business we want to start, the song we want to write, even just having that tough conversation. Those are all things that can make our lives better, more fulfilling, right? Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. And it's sneaky, too. Pressfield lists all these, like, everyday things as triggers, relationships, projects, even just trying to be healthier. It's like, is resistance lurking everywhere? It really is. It's everywhere. And that's why it's so important to be able to recognize it. And the important thing is, it's not about blaming yourself or feeling weak or anything. We all face this. It's universal primal, even. So how do we fight something so ingrained in us? He hmm. says we need allies. And some of them are kind of out there staying stupid for one right i mean i'm all for a little playful ignorance but isn't that a bit counterintuitive it is but it's more about silencing that inner critic you yeah know, you know that voice that's always saying you're not good enough or what's the point that's resistance talking trying to keep you safe small ah uh, okay so staying stupid is more about approaching our work like a beginner again open to anything not afraid to mess up exactly like a kid again, that sense of wonder and playfulness and no judgment. And then he puts that with, get this, being stubborn. Yeah. So we've got this childlike enthusiasm, but then this unwavering commitment to the vision. It's wild, right? And that's where the stupidity becomes almost strategic mm -hmm. because you have to be a little bullheaded, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a little naive even just to power through those doubts. So we've got those two working together, stupidity and stubbornness, to help us get past resistance. And then he adds in blind faith. Now we're getting kind of metaphysical. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. What's that about? It's about trusting the process, even if you can't see the destination yet. It's like surrendering to that flow state where ideas just appear. He uses this analogy of a box, says there's always something inside no matter how many times you open it. Is that his version of a creative lucky dip? It is. It's like this endless well of inspiration. But here's the thing. It's not passive. You have to actually show up, do the work, even when you aren't feeling it. Because that's when the real magic happens. He even calls it assistance, this force that kicks in when we're truly committed. Yeah, it's like the universe is rooting for you in a way. But you can't just wait around for expiration. You have to be in the game. And to stay on track, he borrows something from screenwriting, talks about structuring projects like a three-act play. And this isn't just for, like, artists. He uses The Last Supper, Moby Dick even, to show how this structure pops up everywhere. Okay, so how do we go from a Da Vinci masterpiece to, say, launching a product or writing a business plan? You've got to find those turning points, the big beats that move things forward. What's the initial spark, the challenge, and how does it resolve? So, not about being rigid, but having a framework to build on. Exactly. Like a blueprint. It gives you a starting point. But the real creativity comes in the execution, in the details. And he's even encouraging us to channel our inner screenwriter. Go big, no holding back on those initial ideas. Yeah, because the first draft isn't about perfection. It's about getting it all down. He even says, suspend your judgment at this point. Remember, we're still embracing that stay stupid thing. So we're silencing the inner critic, going full screenwriter, and trusting the soup. It does feel like we're getting away with something, right? Like stealing from Hollywood. But I kind of like it. Totally. And he actually says to you, like, work backward a bit. Start with the end goal and figure out the big moments that get you there. Okay, now I'm picturing a whiteboard, index cards, string. Yeah. Like we're solving a mystery. See? It can be fun. He even says, just use a single piece of paper. Keep it simple so you don't get overwhelmed. Because that's when resistance comes back. Yeah. Right. You get bogged down, start doubting yourself, and that blank page is just daunting. Exactly. And Pressfield calls this hitting the wall, that point where the excitement wears off and we're faced with our own limitations. Ugh, yeah. I think every creative person has hit that wall at some point. It feels like you're failing, like maybe you're not cut out for this after all. Right, but here's the thing. He says those moments of panic, those crashes even, they're actually good signs. They mean you're pushing yourself, going somewhere new. So we shouldn't give up, we should lean into it. Okay, I mean, I get it, but that's tough. He compares it to like a sailor with their sails. 
to catch the wind, you have to be willing to get tossed around a bit. Embrace the chaos. So it's about changing how we see those obstacles. They're not failures. They're opportunities to learn to get better. Exactly. It's all about growth. And that's where his advice to work the problem comes in. Figure out why you're stuck and find a way through. He talks about how he got negative feedback on one of his books. The profession hit that wall. But instead of giving up, he rewrote the whole thing. There you go. Because setbacks are going to happen, it's what you do with them. Do you let them stop you or use them as fuel? And it's not just him. He says even the great struggled. He even talks about Moby Dick. Like, what if that had crashed and burned? It's true. How could Melville have salvaged it? Exactly. It humanizes the whole process. You know, even the people we put on pedestals, they had their doubts too. So there's a pattern here. It's not just blindly stumbling around. You act, you reflect, you adjust, and you do it again. That's the key. Yeah. Momentum. Pressfield says we have to keep the chains moving. Keep showing up. Even when we don't feel like it, make it a habit. Exactly. Because when you're consistent, that's when you tap into that flow and the ideas just come. And that's where the magic really is, isn't it? When you trust the process enough to just let go, let the work happen. Totally. And at the end of the day, that's what doing the work really means. Showing up every day and pushing past those internal barriers that are holding us back from truly living our best, most creative lives. Which brings us to, honestly, the scariest part of all of this, actually sharing your work, putting it out there for everyone to see and judge. Right. And he doesn't try to make it prettier than it is. He compares it to exposure, like in mountaineering. Yeah. You're completely vulnerable, no safety net. And he's not wrong. It's terrifying making yourself that vulnerable. It is, but there's power in it too. Mm. Because when you share your work, you're sharing a part of yourself, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like pushing past that fear of judgment, of failure, and just saying, this is me, this is what I made. And even if it's not what you hope for, even if it's a total flop, mm -hmm. just the act of doing it is huge. It just takes guts. It does. And he reminds us, it doesn't end with one project. It's a lifelong thing. You're always pushing further, finding new limits. And speaking of pushing limits, he gets pretty real with those two tests, the how bad do you want it and why. Man, those are tough ones. They are, because it makes you really think about what's driving you. It's easy to say we want something, but are we willing to actually put in the work to face those fears, make sacrifices even? And are we doing it for the right reasons? Or are we just chasing validation or fame or money? Because that never ends well, does it? Right. Pressfield says the most fulfilling kind of work comes from a place of service. Like wanting to contribute something meaningful. Tapping into that inner drive, the thing that makes you create no matter what. Yeah. That really gets to the core of it, doesn't it? It's like, yeah. what's that fire inside you? And that's where I think those two allies we talked about come back in the stupidity and the stubbornness. Right. It's so interesting how Pressfield ties those together because like passion's not enough. Wanting it isn't enough. You have to be willing to tell that inner cricket to, you know, shut it. Yeah, you need that almost stupid optimism, that stubborn belief in yourself, even when it gets hard. Totally. Yeah. And that kind of leads into another one of his ideas, which I'll admit sounds a little strange at first. Staying primitive. Okay, yeah, that one always throws me off a little. What does being primitive have to do with creating? Well, think about it. When we're kids, we create without thinking, without all those expectations, right? Yeah. No self-consciousness. We just experiment. We make a mess. And sometimes we're surprised by what comes out. It's like the pure joy of building a pillow fort or something. No rules, just imagination. Exactly. And Pressfield's saying that energy, that primal creativity, it's essential. He says a lot of the best art, the big innovations, people probably thought they were crazy at first. It's about getting back to that sense of possibility, breaking the rules a little, trusting your gut. Exactly. And that's where trusting the soup comes in. You're surrendering to the process, you know, like there's something bigger guiding it all. Okay, so we're channeling our inner child, ignoring the inner critic, trusting the soup, and staying a little stupid and stubborn along the way. It's a lot. Any final words of wisdom from Pressfield on how to handle all this? He basically says, look, it's a journey. There are going to be ups and downs. You'll have doubts. But if you can learn to love the whole process, the mess and all, you'll find this well of creativity inside you that you didn't even know was there. And I think when it gets tough, when resistance is really coming at you, it's helpful to remember even the people we think of as masters, they went through it too. Exactly. Their struggles, even their failures, those are all part of it. Yeah. It means they were willing to push, to take risks, to do the work. 
and that's really the heart of it, right? It's not about some perfect definition of success, but about showing up for the process, all of it. Yeah. So to everyone listening, go out there and create. Embrace that stupidity. Trust the suit. Be stubborn. Be yourself. And don't you dare give up on the work that lights you up. Because the world needs what you have to offer. Your voice. Your vision. Go make something amazing. Love that.